Hi everyone, it's FSK Your Fashion Drawing Tutorials and in this lesson we are going to render this beautiful silver metallic uh, Balmain dress um, with this uh, chrome-like uh, belt. So uh, here is a list of the tools that you'll need. We don't need that many colors of markers. And I have a standard walking pose for the model. And I have like uh, in many tutorials I showed how I rendered the skin. So I really want to focus more on the textures in recent tutorials. So I start with this neckline which stretches down uh, below the breast. And the, the bodies of this dress is a bit oversized. So I go down diagonally from her shoulders and approximately just a little bit below your breast we, we are going to have the, the belt. So I'm just connecting all these points and I try to, be, to draw everything a little bit differently so <clears throat> we don't have a perfect symmetry. Um, so we have round uh, huge sleeves. I have attached the reference image on the Patreon. So you can take a look and just compare the rendering technique and the actual design. And uh, also you can use it if you, if you draw some different pose. So it's just there. I uh, always try to draw the lines, I mean the structure of the arms, even if the arms themselves are covered with sleeves, so you know where to position the hand. Um, because um, it's possible to end up with the hand that is just shouldn't be there. So the structure is really important. So whenever I teach fashion illustration, many students avoid drawing the bone structure as at least as a lines. You don't need to draw bones. And that's bad because, uh, because our body uh, is based on that structure. So we, we need to have at least simple model of it. So here I have a sleeve that is a bit longer. Pay attention, the sleeve has this diagonal cut. And uh, yeah, so here I will show. Um, I want her to be like a fairy. And um, okay, I'm going to show how I color the skin. Just coloring this fragment, it's the most uh, complex part, I think, of the um, body in, of the open parts that I rendered. Um, so I use shale uh, color of pro marker so uh, you can match your marker if you use different brands. So I use it for the contour mostly to show the darker shadows then I spread shale on metal surface like you can use any solid surface and then I mix tan marker which is lighter with that shale to show any spots that mm, that are dark but uh, not that dark so I just work directly with shale so I prefer mixing lighter marker with the darker one and I can control the amount of darker marker that I use by just you know like if I dip more into it the lighter mark, then I get more. Also, um, uh, what else I want to say? Uh, try to work a bit faster whenever you mix different markers together. Uh, I do it very often for the skin. So try to work faster so your markers are wet and they mix a little bit. So you will get a really nice transition and uh, very good contrast in the end. So uh, mixing tan with um, with the shale, I um, just darkening certain parts. You can see that I left some spots light. They are uncolored. I'm going to use satin there later 
uh, to show the highlights. Okay, so I'm taking satin and coloring the rest. Uh, you can add several layers of satin because uh, one layer might be too little and uh, the highlights are just will look too separate from the rest. And then you can work with a tan while satin is still wet. So tan will um, lay down a bit uh, in a lighter way. Then you can use purple for the shadows. And uh, yeah, and then use a white pencil for the highlights. You might find it like too many steps, but uh, I'm just showing my own process. You can use two markers, one for the shadows, one for the highlights, and just build a transition. Just do it in the way that you feel um, comfortable uh, with uh, right now. And then you can just play around. Maybe um, <clears throat> you'll get used to this uh, way of mixing more than two markers. So now I'm using Cool Gray 5 and I'm going to color the whole dress with it. And uh, here we have like silver, that's why I'm using cool gray 5, like a really dark gray. If it was like a pink dress, I would use burgundy, like a really dark reddish um, tone, like tone of red. If it was like a um, green dress, I would use the darkest green. So you, you just need to match uh, the color and make the background really dark. Uh, but but like the hue should um, be the same as the hue of the highlights at the background. Uh, try to get a solid background, so color it so it's more or less solid. And while it's still drying, I'm going to I'm going to work with your um, with your crown belt and. Uh, we have like many many thin segments that are overlapping um, <clears throat> I would be happy if you wrote in the comment section below what you want um, us to draw next and I really want to focus more on the textures as I used to do a long time before without making too complex like um, uh, poses <clears throat> for the tutorials because it takes too much time and I think um, that doesn't give that much of teaching value. I think the poses should just be taught separately. So now I'm using ice gray and you can see that I'm adding it in certain columns. But of course, like since these lines are separate, I'm drawing the shapes a little bit differently on every line. But they are just exactly under each other. And in the middle of the, those uh, gray spots, I'm adding some black spots of uh, different shapes. And... Uh, Please watch in a full screen mode so you can see. But actually pay attention whenever you see some really shiny metallic belts or um, accessories. Just pay attention to uh, what spots you see because it's always about certain spots like really big difference between highlights and <clears throat> shadows. So I'm just separating some of those segments with black pencil, adding white uh, lines um, in some gray and black parts. <clears throat> and, um, and also adding some uh, white lines along the black ones. Not everywhere. Try to be like really um, work a bit faster. I'm, I'm going to use sandpaper. It has this marking P100. I think it's... Um, it's something about the grid of the sandpaper. I put it just right under my 
sketch and using white uh, pencil. You can use oil wax pencil. And then <clears throat> I push harder in the area that has strong highlights, like your breast or like really prominent folds. And I push less as I go away from those elevated parts. So here we have your uh, arm. And uh, yeah, so I push harder, connecting the shoulder and your hand. And I push less and I build this um, also certain transition. And we really get this nice metallic effect. So whenever you have really tiny, uh, shiny spots, uh, sandpaper works well. This is a different one which has a marking P240. It, is, it has le uh, smaller grains, so just I want just to show you the difference. Because P100 has a quite uh, rough texture. And here we get um, also the effect of tiny uh, shimmery spots, but um, the grain is smaller. So you can uh, experiment with different uh, sandpapers and for certain purposes you might need something more delicate. So you can, um, the sandpaper is quite cheap and you might use it at home for something, uh, for home renovation or something else. So it's quite, <clears throat> it's quite useful to have different ones. Okay, I really like uh, P100. Uh, just gives stronger this uh, wonderful effect. So I want to finish this dress using this paper. Uh, we have a fold uh, <clears throat> on her skirt, then some uh, just where she has her stepping leg. Um, we have some highlights on the hip and I push less as I go away from the main highlighted area. Okay, perfect. Nice, so perfect. Uh, I'm going to add some shadows along your collar and uh, <clears throat> show that uh, seams between the bodies and the sleeves. Okay, I'm putting the sandpaper again. I just want to add some <clears throat> some uh, lilac to the highlights. I'm not pushing too hard, so it's very subtle um, tone that I'm adding, but um, I really want it to be there. Okay, so uh, we have these front seams, like <clears throat> darts, right? And uh, I want to make the, the sides uh, shiny. Okay, so now I'm using white <clears throat> ink pen and I'm using Sakura one, uh, the size is 08. So technically it's the average size of the nib. Usually white pens, they have different sizes like uh, super thin lines and super thick ones. And <clears throat> time after time I need to scribble a little bit on the papers, so that's why I'm just taking my pen up beyond the camera view. I'm just spreading it on the paper because whenever you use a pen on 
the top of pencil sometimes it stops working so you need to scribble it a little, little bit on some different paper and then just keep working making those dots <clears throat> so uh, pen dots they are like more white and thicker so they add extra light to this sort of texture And I'm going to add some just lines following the shape of her dress. And just as I see it on the actual dress. It just looks like um, some knitwear having those rows. Okay, just some shadows and uh, we're done with the dress. I'm adding some shadows with warm gray for on her skin, just under her skirt. I'm adding them as the triangles because she has the shadows inside since the skirt is like tightly fitted. It doesn't have that white shadows below. I'm using shale, the darkest marker that we used for the skin, for her fingers. And working with the tan now. And just mixing tan with uh, shale. Again, my palette is not in the view, but that's what I'm doing. So this is an easy way of rendering black uh, hair. You just uh, the the wavy black hair. You just color uh, the the main silhouette of the hair. Um, if you if you have some pieces of hair. Uh, small locks that are uh, separated from the main part, don't draw them. We will add them with a pencil. We need to show the main uh, thick gathering of uh, hair. And uh, we are not leaving any highlights at this uh, point. We just color everything with peach black. Then I'm using warm gray 4 again to add some shadows. Okay, here as well. And here I'm adding some hair just, you know, to add extra texture to make uh, hair look more real. Okay, so next I'm using silver Prismacolor pencil. Just needs to be wax or oil pencil the, with a thick uh, texture. And I'm, <clears throat> and I'm adding highlights. Now I'm using uh, lilac. So you can use uh, light blue, silver, lilac. Really, they all work well. And I'm showing highlights that are typical for the uh, for the waves, for the curls. So just take a look at any image of a wavy hair and you will see this sort of highlights. By showing those highlights, we get this effect of wavy hair. So the last step is to finish uh, 
rendering her shoes. They have the same texture as her dress. So we'll do the same thing, color everything with a cool gray 5. And while everything is drying, I'm using shale. I start with it, uh, mostly work along the contour. Mm -hmm. And uh, next I'm using 10 and uh, the next step is going to be about just making a soft transition from dark to light. Um, so coloring everything with 10. Adding while 10 is wet I can add a little bit shale on the borders and uh, adding more of tan till everything is smooth. All right, so still need to add more of tan here, adding more of the shadows. All right, so you can separate the toes with a purple pencil, like dark brown pencil. And I'm using sandpaper and adding the highlights with white pencil. And, and we are done with this uh, sketch. I hope that you enjoyed it and you are going to use this technique in your own designs or illustrations. And uh, see you very soon in the next tutorial. Thank you for supporting me and take care of your health. So, see you soon.